This is the full best of five, ladies and gentlemen. Winner of this series is the team from Mana that will qualify into ESL 1 Kuala Lumpur. And if you're, you know, you're looking at this Mana region, it is basically a PSG quest as well as Arkany will get a top two team by a large margin. Yep. Teori. One bash and he's dead. I don't think they even need the bash. They will be able to get the sprout going out, but Kaori is just going to get chased down. First blood going the way here of crit. Need the bashes. Let's see. So the Earth Spirit loses his tower at six minutes into the game. So this just kind of completely unlocks Maureen. And he's able to just do whatever he wants mid lane. They're going to try and go for something to happen here. Noob, I'm not quite sure about this. Light Tracker will come in. Kaori's going to try and get Maybe. the fight going. Noob, though, with the Magnetize, will go down. But there's a double damage rune that's going to be more than enough. Maybe and Kaori not. goes down and Marlene will be able to easily walk away. Oh no, it was an interesting go there from Noob. I thought maybe with the level 6 it was going to be enough damage, but it just was not. Now Snaking will go down to Malik in the jungle. Does it really matter? Probably not. Now still using that night time to full effect. They haven't revealed at all. Very brief reveal there. The uh, Warpine Raider, Malik, very smartly though, just sticking inside of the tree line. They get a brief glimpse of him. Is it going to be enough, though? They want to go directly here onto Mar Marine, and they will do the damage to take down the Lina. So in combination with the Inkswell and the Magnetize, this was a little bit too much to chew for the side of Team it's Falcons. Just, it's just one of those instances where you really needed the Bristleback to be facing you. It's like it's like looking back at things like Repair Kit and Paul Man Shield. You're like, why was Oh, don't remind me. Thing? High ground's right, already hard enough to take. Imagine if Repair <laughs> Kit was still in the... Is under attack. It, it would be 70 minute games minimum. Noob. Gonna come in now with the Inkswell, but the Blade Melt turns back around. Amar will try and come in, but that's Amar? a lot of damage. Laguna Blade, he still wins the duel though. So Noob gets that extra bit of damage to start out the game here. They're gonna come in with the Soul Bind. Amar wants to try and keep these people all in together. And a beautiful double sprout as well from Kaori, but I think with Skitty here, it's gonna be too hard for Amar to get away. That's a double kill there for the Lina. So noob. Till though, but during all of this, the net worth lead was 4k. Negative 24 armor. He's currently on Roshan, so he has 6 armor, so he's just going to get punched for a billion. Who are they going to give it to? Yeah, it's exactly the point I was about to raise. Where I've already got two hearts on two of your cores. Bristleback can pretty happily get one next if he really wants to, but again, he's just doubling down on, I want to get on top of Lina, I want to get on top of Luna. Make sure that they don't have that safe way. And speaking of, Lena has found out Kaori, but then the rest of Quest, they hit the Power Rangers button and they will rainbow TP towards the top side of the map. Noob will miss that rolling boulder, but snaking. Fortunately, he's going to be too far away. They want to try and go in and win this fight, but Great as we song. see the Song of the Siren, look at how much HP he is healing. The kick away as well. The Song of the Siren is doing too much work for this team fight. Look at the heal from Malik as well. Gone. He just gets stunned. There's nothing they can do. Amal will be able to TP away. They don't have the damage to take down the Legion Commander. But 5% max HP heal per second. Doesn't matter what you got. They are healing all too much. And with no AA on the field, it'll be a Hiroshan number two. Cheese? Probably Noob. Yeah, it looks like Noob has opened up a slot. I'd give that it. one to Noob. Looks like they want to give it to TA. Where exactly can you look around? They haven't been able to group up and, and ball down and really play around the strength of a Luna path either. Bottom tower has fallen. Uh, the scary part. Being able to get the kills early on. Snaking gets hit by the Silver Edge. They will have the Ensnare coming in from the Nagasara. Gets directly on top with a lot of this magical damage. And now with Malik on the low ground. The bristle back turn. It's like the game shouldn't be broken in this way. That was just a, a pure oversight with the way that the game gets um, determined. Mars got BKB. You're pushing high ground without the Aegis oh. Bristle. He's got to die, but you need the Lena to be able to kill him. And now they get the Song of the oh. Siren off, so I don't think they've really got enough damage here from Amari. He's taunted, but with the cheese, the he cheese. comes out full HP. It does not matter. And Team Falcon, they have thrown everything into the wind, and unfortunately, it came blown back into their face. Yeah, that's the worst part. They at least don't have creeps just yet here inside of the base to quest. So you have to be very, very careful for the next couple of seconds while this back door is still up, but they're just going to charge through it. And say, we don't care, we've got a Luna, we can bounce these blades around and do a lot more damage than what you guys can just standing here. So eventually the creeps will be able to come back in and be able to finish this off for the side of Quest. Mark's going to go in with the bristle back, doesn't get it done. Now with the Silver Edge goes up in the air, we'll be able to have that big MB as he comes back down. Look at the damage, they get it done. 90 seconds with no Malik. 
They have lost a lane of Brax, but this is where you need Quest to just hit that go away button. I want to try and get him towards the backside. Beautiful angle there from Crit. Connects there onto Omar. They want to try and get the kill here on the KO. They'll get the duel, so it's an extra bit of duel damage here for, Omar, uh, for Amar. And it is now finally some signs of life for Team Falcon, but they lose the lane of Rax out of it. And I have to use a glyph here, so you're getting a lot of information if you are Team Falcons. This is a beautiful play by them, just understanding that there's no real right for them to be able to be in the top side of the map. So let's just try and take some objectives and look at the damage that they're doing here to the Raxes. The best way to be able to do it, just use the Dark Forcer onto a Lunar Fusion instead. Now, they're walking in, they want to get these fights going. Look at how much damage they're setting in towards the Earth Heal. Spirit. Do they have the healing? It's not going to be enough to save his life, but they at least get the trade there onto Amar. And now Crit wants to try and walk away. TA2000 claims yet another. Skidder wants to try and get the TP away. Do they have the damage? They've got a lot, but not enough. So they will lose out on two heroes for the side of Team Falcons. They lose out on Noob. It's kind of getting themselves onto the front foot. They can do a lot of work with these Lunar Illusions to keep these lanes pushed out. If they catch some of these members of Quest lacking as they're saying... Vision is doing here. so much. Noob. Gets caught out. The duel goes forward. Do they have the damage to try and take down this Earth Spirit? Song, 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 they song. have a lot of healing. It's 5%. Look at how much now life he gets there. back, man. Noob is full HP. And now with the Song of the Siren, they want to go in towards the background. Crit is going to try and take down the Grimstroke. They do not have this Dark Pocket. Skitter, though, oh so low. Malik wants to try and stand there and just try and throw out these cool Skitter has to go away. He's so low here on the Lunar. Walks away while the Eclipse is going on with the BKB. And Malik is just standing taller, walking in as his bristle back. They will lose snaking on the sidelines. Oh, but Malik, yours. he's going to walk walk in and noob goes forward gets rid of skitter that will not have their carry for team falcons malik will have to just continue to try and find more of these team falcon members but he isn't able to connect there are mal rain who will just have to walk away and pretty sure that was a yule dodge as well of the laguna blade so malik is just playing like an absolute beast using that yule scepter not needing to level it up to being the full wind waker and yeah they're in the base they're just keeping the pressure up all right Noob, that was a little bit awkward there. He put himself into the stone form, but now okay. the A2000s is in such an awkward spot. It's so hard for them to try and take down this Nagasaren, but they get it done. So there's no Nagasaren for 90 seconds. Kaori will go down as well. You can just see these buybacks and how much they want to try and utilize them here for Team Falcons. Want to try and stay away from this Bristleback. He's got so much lifesteal thanks to that 25 talent, but in front of him is Mal Reed, and the Laguna Blade will claim the next kill. So Quest, they get Quest, repelled they... once again. They do at least claim another lane of racks, Matt. Bouncing up and down, up and down. It's still in favor of Quest right now, about 74%. Dyer's level 25 as well. You've got to remember, Skidder did buy back in that previous fight. I'm going to go in for a fight here. Noob goes forward, gets dueled up. They have to get these buybacks going. How much damage can they do? Amar goes down. Noob goes down as well, but he's got the buyback, as we said. There's buyback here for Amar if he wants to try and get into it. They're going to use the Eclipse, but no BKB for Skidder. No life and no buyback. That is one minute and 20... Oh, I mean, two minutes. And crit... We'll just try and buy a bit of space. He does have a charge for at least trying to get himself to some other part of the map. Not the best place for him to try and go. It's just going to try and take Ooh, this. Wait, Malik's there. And he gets the kill. So Spirit Breaker will just buy it back into this fight. One way to get back to base, though. Just buy back. Yeah. <laughs> Instantly get there. Lena. So all of that pure damage is going to be putting in so much work. I just don't think they have the sustain to be able to truly make it happen. Let's see. Breakers. But the idea is they want to try and put the pressure on the tier 4 towers. They could have potentially tried to take a whole line of racks, but they want to try and end this game while Skitter is still not available for another minute. Crit, beautiful charge through, does a lot of damage, at least now with the reel in. It doesn't really do all too much onto that Spirit Breaker. Once again, goes in the stone form, does noob. They're going to get the Soul Blind, they're going to get the Dark Portraits. It's only really onto the Spirit Breaker and the Enchantress, so these Dark Portraits aren't going to be that great. But now they're with the Ancient Mode, the there's going to be a lot of these trees. They want to try and fight, but they want to try and stop this fight. TA2000 gets a duel in. The Laguna Blade, it's a lot of damage, and now Malreen gets back inside of the fountain, but look at his HP on the Ancient. They need to try and keep this going. They need to try and keep it alive. Malik's there with the punches and quest. We'll get the first game victory here in this grand final. Best of five. They had to work for it, though, Matt, and it got to a point where eventually they were able to close out the game, and oh my god, what a good game for Quest to be able to finish that one out. I, I'm, I'm seeing things for him, and of course, Skitter on the Spectre, Enough said. Man knows how to yeah. play a mean Spectre. So, uh, Malreen, another one of these heroes that he has uh, leveled up to Grandmaster. So, are there any heroes that Malreen doesn't have Grandmaster? That's probably the better question.
Well, well, yeah, but when I when I loaded in, it was the Grandmaster, and uh, unfortunately for Snake King, he is not the master of his own destiny because he will lose his life as quickly as he gained it. Bowser and Kaori just being in, getting that bonus damage again. 36 bonus damage from level one teleport. It's kind of stupid, but you know what? They keep letting them pick it. Oh. Yep, they just allow this uh, Nature's Prophet to be able to be picked on the field. He walks in and does the uh, whatever he would like when it comes to roaming around the map. I mean, I guess the, the same is kind of true for a Spear Breaker, right? Like, he, the fact that he does a billion damage at like level 9 is kind of annoying. He does it from level 1. And Omar makes a rotation towards the bottom side here. Nice little charge there going to a 2000. They don't have the extra bit of HP to try and keep this Lunar alive, but maybe they can turn it back around and get some of these kills. But Omar doesn't have the damage on the Grimstroke, and Omar will be able to take him down with a triple ring strat. So see you later, and thanks for the extra kill. Stick in the jungle. Farm. You know that with a nature's prophet, you've got plenty of heroes that are... Plenty of times for them to be able to get the farm yeah. and plenty of times for them to try and dive out onto Skidar with the ink spell. That's enough damage for Malik to claim another kill. Two levels in the double edge, so he's looking to try and get that magic damage abuse going in. And speaking of abuse, it's Noob that's copying it in this mid lane. Nice TP rotation here from Kaori to just kind of cut that off. They almost got the kill back on the Marlene. Where do the connections come from, though? Matt? That's the question. They've got the, the boots travel up now on Malreen. Snaking looks like he's trying to find TA2000. Burn on Skidder either, so it's not like they're going to be scaling off the back of that. I don't think anyone has them right now, as they make a bit of a dive here onto yeah. TA2000 on the bottom side, and that's where the movement is going to be coming from. The blade mail, not even needed by Skidder to be able to... And I don't think you're really worried about that right or right clicks, at least for this very early stage. True. Very, very true. All will take is a little bit of this extra time, and Malik will then have probably phase. As you said, Echo Salami and Noob will say thank you to that. So Blink Heart available at 13 minutes for the side of PSG Quest. Didn't even go the phase boost. He's like, you know what? I'm rushing the plate mail. <laughs> <laughs> to to me, looking at this, this would look like a Seraxian's like Centaur guy. That's what it looks like to me. Rush heart into plate mail, how do you die? HP and armor, and fortunately for Mr. Malreen, he would like to hear those tips about how not to die, because he died again on the Batrider. Zero, two, and two. Hasn't been able to connect much. Yes, he's got the bits to travel, but they just haven't been able to get these kills. They're looking towards TA2000. A lot of damage comes in thanks to the blade mail, so this is a rotation. They want to try and get a workout here for Quest. They come in, blink in as well onto Noob. They want to try and deal the damage here to Amar. How much damage can they do? It's very hard for them to take down this pesky little Enchantress Malik. Very, very tanky with his heart as well as the plate mail, but they want to leave this bristle back alone. Just his fourth uh, kill involvement of this 20-minute game so far, but certainly not wanting to use too many of those flaming lassos onto just a support. Oh, noob's in trouble. They need the damage and they get it done there thanks to an input of shot. So Skidder with the trusted picked up Radiance is now able to deal the damage and it seems like this has been the go button for Team Falcons. Omar is the next one on the chopping block and Ag's picked up as well for Omar. That will just be another kill that they get. We will see how these next couple of engagements go, right? Because it feels like both teams are just like, all right, we're going to hit creeps until we feel like we've hit critical mass. And then we're going to start banging heads together and see who comes out on top. And then that's going to determine how this game's going to go. Oh, Malik, he's item smoked timings up as but well. A shield rune. So we're going to go forward. Going on to Omar is a bit rough. And Omar is in the back. The Soulbind goes down there. So they will at least keep Skidder as well as Malreen together. They found out Noob, oh, and the Echo Slam just wasn't there in time to be able to get the cancel on the charge, and Crit will be able to stay on top of the Earthshaker. And they lose two big heroes for the side of Quest, so that was a fight that they wanted to take for the side of Team Falcon. It still, at the end of the day, is only a 1k net worth lead. Roshan's going to go their way. Well, he had the Satanic queued up, but now he's got the uh, Silver Edge as the only item. And I feel like that kind of is the go time coming through from them, right? You've got Bristleback, you've got the snaking kill potentially as well. That feels nice. Uh, but yeah, like Bristle, Spectre, they need to be dealt with. Uh, the person that I'm honestly looking at for the next little bit, he hasn't died a single time, but only 2 0 and 5 on Malik so far. I really feel like he needs to be the one kind of setting the pace, playing a lot more aggressively. 
Well, that's what he's this doing right now. Start. They're getting very aggressive here on a skitter. Do they have the damage? The auto attacks are there in time. They take down the Spectre. Finally, they're getting on the aggressive here for Quest. They want to kill, Qu uh, kill Crit. They do get it done, but now with Amar, with this Aegis, it's very scary. Bristol back. They need to try and leave him be. They do have a Lincoln Sphere now onto Noob, though. Do they have a Shadow Step? They don't have Shadow Step for another 15 seconds. So if there's a fight to break out, it better break out now if you quest. The high ground. They're going to go in. This is going to be a massive echo slam. They found everybody sneaking's dead. The Enchantress goes down, instantly buys back. They want to come in for Mal Reed. And echo slam does a lot of damage, but it gets returned completely. Damn, but a TA2000 who just tears through the members of Team Falcon. And that will be a triple kill for the Luna. And now they're looking for more here on the sneaking. The break goes in and he is dead for a second time. And you can just see, as soon as that fight broke out, there was just like, I think there was like five seconds left on Shadow Step. They're looking towards Roche. You said. Longest possible respawn. Oof. Kicking Gaben, that that is uh, the case for them. Really? Charging bottom, so they know that the Spirit Breaker is around here. Malik is going to lose his, uh, his smoke. They want to try and go forward. Oh, the Echo was just a little bit too early there from Noob. His finger's too fast, so they don't get the Echo Slam kill there onto the Spirit Breaker. They're going to try and go in onto Amar. Stampede buys enough space. Now with Malrain in the back, this uh, Grimstroke is going to go down. TA2000 extremely low. Wants to try and do the damage. Amar's is going to stand there. DD Rune is him. not going to be enough. They're just shredding him apart. He and back. the Luna will go down. They're just going to buy back. They want to get these fights going. Noob, though, wants to get on top of some of these. Here it doesn't have the damage. It's a double kill for the Bristleback. Omar just pulled Team back. Team Falcons Ooh. are just going in and they're tearing Quest apart. Now in the field range, the A2000 the goes back in on towards the Spectre. This time goes down. Though. This is no PKP. Uh, double uh, hoof drop from Malik. It's a lot of damage and it's a lot of kills that they get as well. Double kill now for the Luna. But with the buyback coming in from Skinner is enough to keep them into this game. And as you said, that is a dieback on three of the heroes. And Noob needs to get the hell out of Dodge. Otherwise, this game is over. Without a BKB and without a, a Satanic, you actually just can't stand and man fight against this blade mail that the Spectre has. It, it just felt like even with the Aghanim Shard, TA2000 just did a lot of his own damage to himself. Yeah, it's just kind of crazy now that I'm looking back at these items. There's no BKBs in the course of the side of Quest. And speaking of the cause of Quest, Noob's been found out and the Earthshaker will go down as well. Another dieback for the side of PSG Quest. They... Absolutely threw everything at the wall. The Aegis cheese high they ground has well been sieged. Exactly. It's just so much going their way. I mean, it really feels like they're just so frustrated at the Stampede being used as this full-on get out of jail free card, right? If you use the Abyssal Blade, even if the Stampede is popped. Run's getting spicy. Crit is top. Same with Skitter. Skitter can join the fight instantaneously. Crit though has to charge through everybody. Where they want to be. They want to be on the other side of the map. They want to try and make sure that they are not getting directly quilled in from Amar. They're going to try and go in. Malik wants to go up onto the high ground. Oh, that's a beautiful Yule Scepter. Now Amar's going to come in. I want to try and get away from this Bristleback. He's popped that BKB. Stampede's being used. Good disengage here from Quest. They want to have this fight on their own kind of turns now. Malreen comes in. Skidder to the backside. He's going to take down Omar. Omar's going to have no way back into this fight. He will have to buy back those TA2000. Getting completely carted around. And now we are coming in for the charge. Wants to try and take down Malreen. But it's another one of these flaming lasses. TA2000 standing and fighting. How much damage does he have? It's a lot takes down crit so they will not have Malreen for 90 seconds here and the buyback comes in from noob as well the earth shaker wants to get these fisty cuffs going maybe able to do it maybe they'll start to time some of the stuns just towards the very end there so they get him before he starts walking top oh yeah this is, this is definitely done in time just enough <laughs> ta2000 the cojones on this man it's divine rapier time he's got it in the quick fight there is the, the full hitcher ride being completed as well here from Malik. They want to go forward. Goes in with the hoof stop. Look at the damage that they're doing here. Got about half Sounds HP nice on the snaking. You said it's a full buyback now from crit. They need to be careful. Not the Aegis of the Immortal as well as the cheese to be able to play around with, but have been able to at least pull quest back inside of the base for now. But this game's slowing down to an absolute crawl here. So full refresher on TA2000 as well. So double Eclipse, double BKB, double Static. 
Oh, Echo Slam, I heard it. He goes out on directly onto Malreen. He gets oh so low. Do they have the extra damage? The Soulpine goes down. It's the Illusions. The Illusions. Do they have the damage? The right clicks, it's there in time. They take down the Batrider. Kaori with the vision to be able to get that Lucent Beam down as well from TA2000. And the right clicks gets it done from the man in the trees. Shaker just wanting to make sure he's saving for that buyback, realizing how vital Roshan attempt is going to be. Malik once again being the one on the front line. TA as well. They have to be careful. They don't want to try and overcommit here onto Snaking. They are going to try and buy out some of this buyback. They are still keeping an eye on Roshan, who has just respawned. Haunt goes in. Now they want to get directly into the background. They don't have this Echo Slam. Skidder goes directly in onto the Grimstrike. He has the cheese. Doesn't get it done. Has the full buyback as well. TA2000. He's getting caught out. But look at the damage now with the Eclipse. It's a double lasso. It goes in onto TA2000. He has a refresh of the Satanic. Turns back around. BKB double time. And he's doing so much damage back now with the Luna. TA2000. Is standing tall with the Eclipse as well. And Team Falcon, they just don't have the HP to stand in front of this Lunar at the late game stage of 55 minutes. And they will not be able to stand oh, in front of her again. again with Noob just doing all the work at the fissure. He's going to hitch a ride. He's going to bring <laughs> Crit down back into the fountain. And TA2000 is still oh so low. A lot of these buybacks are going to make these fights a bit spicy. They still have buyback for TA2000 as well as Malik as well. They're going to look to try and kill him up. He off. goes down. He just gets deleted by the Silver Edge. And once again, Snaking and the boys are trying to keep this fight rolling. The fish is not enough to keep Kaori alive. So both of the supports by Quest are dead without any buyback. And everybody from the side of Falcons have fought into this fight. He's Malik got a workhorse for himself. Will eventually go down. But he has the buyback here, Danok. That's the special thing is he has buyback, but neither do the supports on Quest. Going away of quest and well it means that falcons they're going to have this fourth roshan going in their favor another use of the uh, refresher shard going to be incredibly impactful i kind of feel like you give it up you know like you, you have a lineup that's capable if you win a team fight if the enemy team doesn't have buybacks that you can just run it down and end the game mega creeps or not so you give this one up sure i mean i, I think if you haven't gone the stroke of a cast range you basically doubled down on just being a continuous support. Yeah. Well, last person was TA2000. He's got it available for himself now. Of course, Meg Creeps means that Creeps are just all pushing into the base. Ones to make the first move. Looks like they are going to be Falcons. I'm hearing a Firefly come through. It was Marin. Tied. Gonna see if you can catch out some of these members. They go in. Malik goes into the backside. They do have the haunt oh, out. Shadows. They go directly on top of Omar. Does have the buyback though. Now they're gonna come in with the first bit of the eclipse. Look at the damage that he's doing here on TA2000. They want to try and take down Skinner. They don't get the damage. They don't get the first life on the Aegis of the Immortal. Malik they getting just caught out once again. There's another flaming lasso, and he will go down as well. Another one of these buybacks is gonna have to be used. And as you said, they already got the first Aegis of the Immortal. The first life goes down. TA2000 goes back inside of the base. He wants oh, to try and just came though. They soak oh, up everything. No. You hate to see it when it comes to the second eclipse. Everyone has a boots of travel though, or a charge, or you know, haunt slash um slash shadow step, so not like they can even look to isolate anyone. In. It's gonna be very hard for them to, to isolate any of these members. So now up to higher ground they go. The Team Falcon, they go in the back. Um, oh no, they've got the Batrider on the building inside of the base. The A on this, it's big though. Be able to save out Malrim for now. They will get the Book of Shadows to be able to keep him untargetable outside of the game for now. They have to be careful of their tier fours. They're going to go forward. The first Eclipse goes yeah, the down. Creeps. They soak everything. The 2000 has this uh, refresher, refresher on to be able to utilize. He wants to pop his BKB. He wants to try and utilize the maximum amount of this refresher on, but they just eviscerate the nature's profit. He goes down and they use the BKB and they will just dip out once again here from Team Falcon. And they're just walking up Vision. onto the guys of the smoke. Jump. Give him the Lincoln's block though. Have anything else to be able to cast in onto them. The Shaker, I'm sure he's pinging it again saying, I can't jump him, I will die. Yep. There's nowhere to go forward. Now the mirror shield. They're going to pop it out. Aeon Disc now goes in onto Marlin. They have it onto the Luna. Can they lock her down? But it's a massive echo set. There's what all five echo. heroes stuck inside of that. TA2000 is dead. He's got the refresher. He has the satanic. He doesn't have the life though. The rapier's on the ground. They've done enough damage for Team Falcon to be able Still to take down one. It is Malik that's able to get the kill. 
And with the Rapier on the ground, they will be able to claim it back once again here for TA2000. And how much damage did that Echo actually do? Like, it felt like it was one of the biggest ones that we've seen the entire game, but yeah. looking back at the fight recap, it's fairly tickling. Like, 2,000 damage is, you know, it's a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, in a 75-minute game, not so much. Yeah, maybe it was Let a lot bigger hit. Oh, beautiful lasso be directly it. on a TA2000. This looks like it could the be satanic. it. The satanic, he's turning back around with the rapiers as well. He gets flicked over to the other side of this future. TA2000 wants to try and stand and hold his ground with his rapier and the butterfly. It's not going to be enough. Snake, he goes into the air and they take down the pesky Luna. Finally, at 75 minutes, you see the cores go down. They almost get it done here off movie. Wants to try and take down Malik. He does have his own buyback, though. The Oshaker out into the sidelines isn't going to be enough, and Quest will call it quits. 75 minutes into this game here, Danog. That was an absolute marathon in this game number two of this full best of five, and we are going to be going all the way to four minimum. And it's going to be a very, very long series, no matter which way that you cut it because this grand final has given us everything so far. Very interesting to see how they're going to play around uh, a lot of these different heroes and see how they're going to get this third game going after. Yep. The male storm is a big one. I'm, I'm just like thinking of like every time Nahas would like be like, oh my god, X player hero. Like Samael. <laughs> that is a good question. It's a uh, Samael storm and um, Miracle Invoker. There he goes down. Or Mar is able to get away from that, so they will not have the Rolling Thunder for another 70 seconds. Tactically done by Omar. Uh, sorry, uh, Amar. Just popping the uh, the Eye of the Storm as well, just to make sure that he was going to be able to survive. And they're actually going to be the ones to get the kill onto Noob. Missed Berserker's call and runs into an Echo. Yeah, they have a little bit of extra damage. Crit wants to go back in oh. now with the Nether Strike, but it was the, the counter Helix that's able to claim the kill onto the Spirit Breaker. Malik is very, very low here on the Axe, and Skidder wants to try Sweet. and claim something back in onto this Axe. Blade Mail goes down, they don't get the Berserker's Call. Beautiful Fissure there once again from Malrin. They are just claiming kills left, right, and center in this mid lane. Yeah, just be able to come in, get the click, get the Echo Slam, does a lot of damage, might be able to convert kills onto some of these tankier heroes. Malik. Get no, the Echo the Slam. One. Have the Spectre as well. They don't want to try and get caught out by the Berserker's Call, but they get away from him. Spectre. Get it. Precisely done there. Sucking life force. Oh. One thing with no hugger is that they, uh, they have no way to be able to take a lot of these towers, right? And he, they can, again, single-handedly took that top tower. Get a oh, double what call. a blink call. They've caught them. Trying to park out on the, the, the petrol servo. And Malik, it gets the double kill, double dunk as well. Beautiful to see. That was instantaneous from Malik. For a high priority target. TA2000 making the full wraparound happen. Oh, pops. Pretty tanky, but I don't think he's tanky enough. That is just an instant evaporation of TA2000. So it does mean that you can actually tank this. Quite a lot easier. Gives Crest more time as well to be able to make a lot of these uh, plays around the map. Allows them to get a little bit more value out of the Midas that Kauri has. He's starting to begin and scaling into his own right. Lane though, Alec. He's been caught out. He's doing a lot of damage and Skitter will be able to just fall himself away. Shadow step into the safety of the river. And a beautiful Fisher once again comes in there from Maurin, and they will be able to secure a second. So Danog, it looked like so far that we were, we were staring down the barrel of, of Quest being able to pull this game back, but... Prioritize just dealing with a small amount of damage, roaming around the map. Lockdown that they have is the only reliable lockdown that they have is Mal. Sure, you've got Noob, but until he's got that Blink Dagger, eh, he's only 500 gold. Challenging it. Speaking of Noob, will we get a free kill? Ooh, no. Skidder. They come in for the Shadow Step. Malik is here on the corner, but with that Radiant Spurn, it is hard for him to try and blink in. Amar, he's going to come in, gets Blink Cord now with the Blade Mail as well. TA2000 comes in off the Pierce the Veil. The Fury is enough, and that's a beautiful Nether Strike comes in there from Crit. They haven't been able to secure the kill just yet. They lose out on Noob as well as Omar. And Quest thought that was going to be some free snipes for them, but they were in the right place at the right time. We're Team Falcon. It's hard for them to catch this Razor, hard for them to kind of lock him down as long as Malik doesn't get that blink initiation. 
for more of these heroes sneaking. Because of the spec illusion, looks like they should be able to catch Easton's nade. They don't get the dunk though, which is a little unfortunate for Malik. He was a little bit too early. Get the extra kill there on a the crit as well, thanks to Noob as well as TA2000. They want the echo, they go directly in, and that is a Muerta no longer. She is dead and Kaori TP's away, so there's no other way of them stopping that TP, so that will just mean that they only lose TA2000. And this is a smoke in from Quest. One needs to pay off for him, but smoke right back in return, sneaking again, just priority is put down as much vision as possible. Free line, but never mind, he's just on smoke breaking duty. Yep, and he does break Death the duty. smoke indeed. Now crit's gonna come in with the BKB, goes in onto Malik, he's also low, into the backside goes Skidder. But with TA2000, doesn't have the BKB, but he turns back around now with Pierce the Veil. How much healing can he get done here on the Muerta? I don't think it's gonna be enough, it's the Blade Mail that turns around, deals the damage. Malik, he gets stunned, he can't dunk on the Spectre. And the Spectre turns around with the Basher and says thank you for that, they will lose only one, but it is five that they get in return. Very nicely done there. He's actually going into the pipe next, just wanting that little bit of extra safety against, uh, I guess, the Muerta for the very start. The like spirit fake mana. That, uh, that did everything, yeah. It's like fake news, but, but mana. Oh, oh, line jump. Love Snay. Yep, they do get him here, and look at the damage. That was quick from Kaori. That was a, uh, a quick and clean death. It's one of these, like, 75-minute games that we're going to mm. get out of this one. Teams that just love going to the late game. Well, there was one, uh... It, uh, it was Chrysalis yesterday, I think, in the Secret Series. They had, like, a, a an 80-minute game, and he had a block Hold of cheese on a Blood Seeker. Now he's getting charged here. Roshan's up. Roshan number mm. three. This is the fight. Oh, that charge almost connects onto both Malik and Kaori. But the Enchantress is able to heal back up. Thanks to the impetus. Oh, the Echo Slam goes into the background. Hits on the three members. And they're looking to try and kill more of these cores. But they assassinate Kaori instead. A beautiful charge once again comes in from Crit. And Omar goes down. So does Noob. So three people for the side of Quest just bite the dust quicker than you can say boo. Yep. Grab the free beast. Going to be ready and waiting for you. Give the shard to... Omar, uh, Omar, it seems. Yeah, they can just start sieging with Skitter on the front lines. He has the Aegis, the Immortal. They've got Amar on the sidelines as well, who's 4.5k HP on a Razor. Like, how do, you, how do you get through this HP bar? Don't know with if luck. they can even do it. They're going to try. Malik up in the air, but it was a Yule Scepter as well. I know where that Yule came from. from. Crit. Wind Waker from Crit, so that was a nice little start. The Aegis. Look at what Ench is doing, though. Claims. Okay, so Kaori does the damage out of mana now, though. The He's Kaori. to be able to get all of this happening. Yeah, won't have the, the certain amount of mana to be able to utilize his tier 2000s in the background. He's been caught out. He does have the damage. The Abyssal Blade goes down, but do they have it? Yes, they do. Amar was able to find out through the Pierce to Veil. It does not matter. Crit in the back line is just causing chaos for Quest, and Malik's going to go down as well. This could be a quick one here. A quick one relative to the, the 70 minutes that we've been having across the entirety of the series. So it is a big start for the side of Team He's gone for the Beyond God like yeah, Amar. He's got nine kills so far. Wants the 10th. Maybe gone a little bit too far, though. So lucky. Yep, he's gone a little bit too close towards the fountain, but with one land of racks already being claimed to your quest, you're in a so very familiar position. The tower as well. Ooh, try and protect from the siege creeps. Looks like they'll oh, be able to get the job done. Yeah, he's just dead. And that's no buyback either for the axe, and Malik will have to just sit and spawn and wait for another 115 seconds. A little bit of luck with the Tormentor, you know, not going to the uh, the Muerta until well, the, what would have been the very last option, but uh, also just a little bit of his own item choices as well. Mm -hmm. Malreen's just on the front lines. A lot of his just strong, beefy right clicks with that Enchant Totem to be able to get the work done. How many of the healing notices do you need to turn into the, the big one? Two greater? That's like 18, maybe? Well, he's close. He's got 10. Maybe it's three. Oh. Sounds like a lot. Oh, there's a fight. It broke out. Malik catches out onto Amara. They've got the damage, That's a man. start. 
Yeah. We said that we questioned whether or not they had the damage to kill Amar, and they definitely do. That was because we were all too busy looking at the healing lotuses, so I'd imagine Snaking was probably doing the same, but Malik gets called out anyways by Skid. That's 100 seconds without no axe. And now they're getting up in 15, though, with a buyback. Forward. He has the horn. That will be the Abyssal Blade to go down on the Kaori. He has no TP to get away from the Spectre, and eventually he will get third down. Buybacks up two and 15. Again, just so much damage that goes the way of uh, of quest. They just can't hold on. I mean, the creeps nearly just took the ancient all while that was happening as well. Like, yeah. they have such small windows for them to be making any sort of plays happen. They're going to need to buy back immediately on Kauri. Oh, crit. Amara has gone a little bit too deep, but the Pierce of Ale is being popped into a BKB. Not all that effective. Yeah, it's just no damage. And, and look at it now from Skidder. They go back in, they deal the damage, they set their attention onto the ancient, and GG gets called anyways. So, quest will concede in this third map here at Team Falcon. They will move themselves ever closer to being able to qualify to ESO 1 Kuala Lumpur. And Matt, after that 70 minute game, this was a, a very, very convincing game number three here. There has been a lot of these matchups that have been kind of back and forth. I haven't really, you know, felt like there's been one player who's just gotten over the top of the other. I felt like uh, Malrin as well as Noob have been kind of trading farm in a lot of these uh, different lanes. I'd be very surprised to see Noob have more than, like, three denies in this laning phase. I was not expecting that, though. I mean, this is a really strong lane, I suppose. Omar and Malik already able to get that first blood on the board. Leave Malik just constantly playing down next to his tower exactly where he wants to be, at least until he picked up that Vanguard for himself. Yeah. Love, and yep, yeah, able to do so because that harp camp is available. Like, happy little clam is Malik. Into a corner. This is going one way. 50,000 though, they're able to get the trouble. kill there on a crit. Amar, he has a big wand, and that's a lot of damage from that Lucent Beam. Yeah, two levels early on. Probably get two, maybe even three usages of the double edge as a result of that. I wonder if he puts more than two points into Palliate, right? It, it feels nice at being able to deal with a lot of these, uh, these Wraith King skeletons, if he does end up using them onto you. It's also quite a lot of the harass from, from Snaking, and speaking of, he was in the mid lane and gets the kill there onto Noob. But still, plenty of damage being pumped in this bottom tower. It'd be an absolute dream if they were able to open up this uh, this side of the map. Make it a lot more capable to be able to invade into the areas that Amara has built up a bunch of these stuff for himself. Oh. Snaking now. comes in to try and get the gank onto Noob in the mid lane, but uh, able to kill that and unfortunately loses his own life. Got some earn charges now. now as well to be able to make plays with. How good's the dead shot? Pretty good. Goes directly yeah. back into the Illuminate, but how much damage do they have? A few more of these auto attacks going in. Fissure directly underneath the tower. Noob isn't hit by those it's auto attacks. Two. Still enough. With that extra bit of uh, farming, he should be able to pick up the kill there on our rent. Now the dead shot goes in, the TP comes in from snaking though, so just buys a little bit of this extra space with his own body. I've mentioned this before, and I'm sure I've told you about it, but uh, I, my good mate Arna, when he was forced to play support in a lot of these pubs, he would pick Nature's Prophet when it was the, uh, you know, the, the Giga Trance was the acronym shard. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come to Amar. Oh, that's a big blink echo slam that comes back in and a noob gets eviscerated. It was the Nature's Wrath that does the damage. They get the kill on Omar as well, and that was the turnaround of the century. Amar dangling like a hefty piece of meat. I don't want to even say optimistic, but something that can be very easily punished if you're not too careful. Yeah. They'll be able to at least retain their tower off the back of this. That is one area of, uh, oh, sorry, of quest that I'm quite confident about. Omar. Timing of the four staff to be able to get away just in. Yeah, Malrin though. Oh, what a beautiful Phantom's embrace. Look at the damage that comes in there from the uh, from the Enchant Totem. And Malik he is oh so low, but they're going to come in with the Soulbind once again. Do the damage with the Stroke of Fate is crit. He has had the fastest fingers of the West throughout the entirety of these last couple of days, man. And we touched on it more as a game one. And it just causes so much havoc across the map. And I really feel like that's what Staking's doing, right? He's 5, 6, and 3, most deaths of the entire game. But you got to say that... Are these shards Still coming this up? this T1 tower, though, on the side is just... Smoking up, and they're going to see the courier, so the exact position is going to be revealed. They just get destroyed. 
so quick with that Wraith King to be able to blink in with the Desolator and just see how much damage that it does do. TA2000 though, he wants to try and come in and win this fight. Malrin, that is an entire Eclipse that you're going to cop. Skidder, he's so low here. So with the Spirit Vessel, he doesn't really have a good place to try and farm and regen, especially with these armor toggles. Crit. Very scary. Again, just gets caught out. The amount of damage that they can do for Quest, it is so simple for them to just be able to continue to run over the top of Team Falcon. I'm looking at Ogre Magi's, and I know what his normal one is, and one with the Arcana is literally just batter up. Awesome. <laughs> it's so... Okay. To add to something... Text, but you know what a flavor I do like, Matt? And it is the flavor of fighting. And that is happening towards the mid lane right now. Unfortunately for Mr. Snaking, he has a big bag of Centaur directly on top of him. Nice little root, so Echo Slam in the background. And once again, eviscerates out onto this Pugna. TA2000 turns on the BKB, though. Will run away with this Eclipse as well. They want to try and get on top of this Muerta. Omar stays alive, but it's a beautiful blink. Who's top once again? Malik turning it on no. for the boys here in this game. Omar's Number four, alive. Omar. Oh, he does so much damage, but Omar turns around and takes them down with the Quill. Skidder is able to capitalize on that, but he's just getting slowed down. So the first life will go away. He has the blink dagger, but the fear is there in time. And now with the calling as well, it is all Kite City. And unfortunately for this Wraith King, he just doesn't have the move speed to get away. And he will lose his life eventually. Some Arlap toggles are doing some cool stuff. They've got the vision thanks to the uh, the courier. And with the dead <laughs> shot. Can he armor toggle? No, he can't. Noob's able to finish him off. So not with a vessel on him. Big fight in that in that mid lane, but go to gym, are they not? Uh, noob said, look, if you don't gym, it's a guaranteed loss. And Amar's like, well, I haven't gym today yet. And he's like, well, <laughs> it'll tell you what's going to happen. He also said that uh, I believe they're saying that they need a 3-0 to go to the gym. And unfortunately, that's not mm -hmm. the way that it's going. Oh, they found someone on the back lines and staying in the corner as well. He's also low here on the nature's top. They want to see if they can try and get the kill here for Skidder. Standing up on the high the ground though, is Omar. They're just going to turn around and deal the damage with this pierce. But they'll double buybacks from these supports as well. Malrin in the sidelines is juking and driving. Oh, he is breaking some ankles around the Roche pit here. Team Falcons, they're happy with this fight because they get a lot out of quest. With just launching all of these treants into the pit, with using the hairball to be able to get in there from range as well. Long left on the Echo Slam here, yeah, full 90 seconds, so that's not going to be a factor. But yeah, like we were saying, Quest, they're the ones that are going to be moving down bottom. It's going to be the race of that versus the TP down to the outpost. Oh. Yeah, Malik goes in, gets a nice little hoose up on the skitter, but now you're going to have the BKSB being popped, uh, and Amar, he's just going to walk into the faces of the entirety of Quest. Skitter's going to stand in Skitter's front of him, doesn't have the reincarnate, so the Wraith King is going to go down. They're looking to try and find Noopy. He's stuck inside of the trees, but Decrep and the Zuck, it's going to be enough to be able to keep the Coddle away. Now Malrain is going to try and get in on top of him. He needs to use the oh, Echo. He doesn't get closer to him. He's so fast, but he gets too close to Amar, who takes him down. It was actually uh, Snaking who gets him done with the sprout that was still left over so Amar's is going to be able to run away here really heads up play there by Malik and well, good use once again of the eclipse there by TA2000 to be able to wipe um, wipe Skidder off the map excuse me plenty of time left on that Aegis though to be able to make another move up onto the high ground no glyph available either they would love to be able to drag this one out without losing too much of that high ground for another two minutes. Ah, goes in. They want to try and take down this first Aegis. How much damage do they have? They do have the Nullify that goes in directly onto Luna. But oh, he missed! The damage. The he butterfly, missed. He's he missed. able to convert onto the kill. So they're just going to leave him beat. He turns around with the Satanic Skidder. He's the one that's getting in trouble. The Dark Portrait is just going to get destroyed here by the Luna on the left-hand side. Namar wants to go in, get himself healed up. He does do a lot of damage with that Aghanim Scepter. But again, they still just haven't been able to convert onto these heroes just yet. The Echo Slam goes a little wide and they just can't get the kills, man. They've used everything and everybody's limping away. They only get the kill onto Omar. Now Amar is trying his best and walking in, doing all the damage to TA2000. He's very low on the HP and mana. Would love to lose his life, but they are seeing if they can try and kite this out. They've got another 48 seconds to try and get it done. She's now nice and healthy now. Amar goes back in. They take down Noob. That's 100 seconds with no Keeper of the Light. This is where it starts getting awkward because these extended fights are getting very, very scary for the in place. They are absolutely kiting the crap out of TA2000. Chopped down, goes out on the Malik and Skidder. He's able to hold on for it. And now with this Nullifier, 
Mario. He's so, so strong. And the Wraith King once again taps onto the Pugna and will let him go back to Fountain for free. Even when he's, like, like, doing the Zuck, he's full-on vibing out, right? He's, like, having a little party. He's like, whoa, it's all <laughs> happening. Pretty sure the taunt is called, like, funny Xyla, uh, like, Xyla Bones or something. And I'm like, that's cool. Oh. I think you're thinking I... Clinks. Oh. That's... It is called Xyla Bones on Clinks. Yeah. Damn it. Wow. All skeletons look the same to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, is Pugna a skelly? Oh, hold on. Team oh, fight. Oh, there's team fight. Let's go. All right. Amar comes in. Hex. Oh, that's double hex as well. Double portrait. And they're coming in. They're doing the damage. They need to get this echo. Ooh. And it's in front of them directly on two of the cores. No See you back. later, Quest. They're losing members left, right, and center, and this game is kicking up to 11 for Falcons. All it took was the extra confidence from, from these fights, and they are now able to charge forward into the base of Quest. 25 230 gold until in. that buyback coming through for the Lunar as well, so he can only just sit back and watch as his base crumbles. That Desolator is just ripping apart this base right now. If this wasn't the final game, you probably might be seeing some G's being dropped, but the way that this It's Quest, going, they would never tap out early. That's true. Quest uh, are definitely in it for the in it to win it most of the time. For the long haul. I think you have to go in here on Malik. You've got to give your life up. You've got the buyback available if you absolutely okay. need to. It's just about making space for Luna to be able to respawn. You can't take too many back steps because they're just going to take your last lane of racks. And that's what they're doing here. Uh, at least now have the Luna be able to come back in. They want to get it done. It is Mega Creeps now for the side of the Falcons. Snaking is probably going to be the only member that's going to lose his life. Beautiful Fissure, and that is just a disconnect. They will at least get the Ocasil Totem over the top. TA2000 wants the kill, but it's Omar who claims it. And PSG Quest, they are looking, they're searching, they're desperately trying to cling to some of these kills from Falcons. So try and give bring the creeps as far a, back as they can. Yeah, let the creeps do the work. Mm. Trying to give them that free path towards that tier 4, right? Trying to make this as hard as it possibly can be for Quest to try and defend. Lunar is great at defending all of these creeps, but you've got creeps, you've got treants, you've got skeletons. Ooh. Echo yep. Slam goes in. Marlin wants to try and get this kill here on TA2000. In comes the Soul Blind as well. They don't get the Dark Portrait, but they get the kill. TA2000 now has buyback. Malik's going to come in, gets a nice little two man who stomp. Is it the damage they need though? BKB is starting to wear out for the side of the Falcons, but they're doing a lot of damage. Turning back in. Marlin goes oh, into the background. Again. It gets the kill there onto the Pugna as well. So Kaori is going to have to buy back into this fight. Skidder goes down, wants to get All this second life. Marlin goes down. So he has a lot of this HP to be able to come back in and try and get this fight going. TA2000, he's over. So low, he's hexed up, he gets four stuff the way, he's trying to get into the fountain, he gets the heal and the cheese, so he will be able to stay alive for a little bit longer, but the base, it's all exposed. in shambles for PSG Quest, they are staying alive thanks to that Wraith King Ags, and all these units are just starting to punch in towards the buildings, and it looks like it is going to be a ticket all the way to Kuala Lumpur, being stamped by the Falcons, they're standing strong, and Amar's doing so much damage here on the Bristleback, and that will be it, it is a 3-1 scoreline. 14 Falcons to get their ticket all the way over to ESO 1 Kuala Lumpur. They'll be flying their way over there for sure, the Falcons yeah. making it a 3-1 as you know, kind of predicted, but uh, certainly not in the fashion that we were expecting. They clearly took the extra, you know, couple of days games to be able to you know, get a bit of a better understanding of how exactly their team is going to function.